వయసు శరీరానికే కానీ మనస్సుకు కాదంటుంటారు పలువురు ఔత్సాహికులు అయితే ఇప్పటి వరకు సరదాగా చెప్పే ఈ మాటే నిజమంటున్నారు ప్రముఖ బయాలజిస్ట్ డాక్టర్ లెరియో హూడ్ పంతొమ్మిది వందల ఎనభైలలోని ప్రోటీన్ సీక్వెన్సర్ డిఎన్ఏ సింతసైజర్లను ఆవిష్కరించి ఘనతను చాటారు అమెరికాకు చెందిన లెరియో హూడ్ శరీరంలోని వివిధ భాగాల పనితీరు ఒకదానిపై ఒకటి ఎలాంటి ప్రభావం చూపుతాయన్న అంశాలపై పరిశోధించేందుకు ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ సిస్టమ్స్ బయాలజీని స్థాపించి అనేక రకాల పరిశోధనలు ప్రారంభించారు హైదరాబాద్ ఏఐజీ ఆసుపత్రిలో ఏర్పాటు చేసిన బయో బ్యాంక్ ని లెరియో ప్రారంభించారు ఈ సందర్భంగా మాట్లాడిన లెరియో మనిషి క్రానలాజికల్ వయసుతో పోలిస్తే బయలాజికల్ వయసు తగ్గించుకోవచ్చు అంటున్నారు ఈ నేపథ్యంలో అసలు వయసు ఎలా తగ్గించుకోవచ్చు వైద్య రంగంలో జెనెటిక్స్ ఎలాంటి పాత్ర పోషిస్తాయన్న అంశాలపై డాక్టర్ లెరియో హూడ్ తో మా ప్రతినిధి రమ్య ముఖాముఖి అరవై ఏళ్ళు వస్తే చాలు అనేక రకాలైనటువంటి అనారోగ్యాలు వెంటాడుతూ ఉంటాయి మరి వందేళ్ల పాటు పూర్తి ఆరోగ్యంగా ఉండొచ్చా వందేళ్ళు వచ్చినా మన బయలాజికల్ ఏజ్ అనేది పెరగకుండా ఉంటుందా అదేవిధంగా ఇప్పుడున్న పరిస్థితుల్లో జీన్ థెరపీస్ అదేవిధంగా జీన్ ఎడిటింగ్ గురించి చాలా విషయాలు మాట్లాడుతున్నాయి ఇవి ఎంతవరకు ఫ్యూచర్లో అందుబాటులోకి వచ్చే అవకాశం ఉంది తెలియజేసేందుకు ప్రస్తుతం మన మనతో ఉన్నారు ప్రముఖ బయాలజిస్ట్ లరాయ్హుడ్ మరిన్ని వివరాలు ఆయన మాటలు తెలుసుకున్నాం సార్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ వీఆర్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ టు మీట్ యూ సార్ సో సో దెర్ ఆర్ సో మచ్ డిస్కషన్ అబౌట్ ద ఏజింగ్ బయాలాజికల్ ఏజ్ అండ్ క్రోనలాజికల్ ఏజ్ కెన్ యూ ప్లీజ్ షేర్ సంథింగ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ So we've devised a metric for biological age that one can determine from the blood. The biological age is the age your body says you are as opposed to what your birthday says you are. And the further your biological age is below your chronologic age, the better your aging. And in a large wellness program where we looked at 5,000 people, we were able to show for every year a woman stayed in the wellness program she lost a year and a half of her biological age so that was up to 6 years change and for men it was about 0.8 years and the really interesting question is to how much can we influence how you biologically age and can we keep you really young I had a friend during that four year period that actually lost 10 years of biological age and right now I'm about 15 years younger in biological age than my chronologic age. So I'm very optimistic we can use this measure to drive down the aging process in a really striking fashion. And the reason that's important for many people is most chronic diseases like cancer and diabetes and heart disease is how old you are and if we can diminish the rate at which you age we can diminish the rate at which the population gets chronic diseases as you mentioned we cannot stop chronological age but we can reduce the biological age so how a person can reduce their biological age so the way you reduce your biological age is you look at the basic elements that we use to calculate it and they reflect different things that you can do these are all from the blood they reflect different things that you can do that is you can increase vitamins you can decrease dangerous components like toxins and so forth and your biological age gives us real clues into how we can bring that biological age down further so you are here at hyderabad for inaugurating a bio bank at aig hospital what exactly is the use of this bio bank bio banks are very very important because they allow systems and hospitals to gather samples on very large populations of people and of course this is done with their permission and once we have these large population sets of samples and discover many new things about how we can optimize wellness and avoid disease in the future so you just mention about the prevention things here but uh, according to uh, so many researchers the india is going to be the capital of diabetes how can we prevent this i think the way we uh deal with any chronic disease is to gather enormous amounts of information on that disease 
from many individuals that are at very different stages of the disease and observe it over a period of four or five years. And we're going to do this with phenomic measurements that give us 10 times as much information, I would argue, as we've ever, ever gathered before. Once we've learned from those studies, we'll be able, one, to think about new ways of prevention, but two, new ways for dealing with individuals that have diabetes at many different stages of the disease. There's the cancer, which is increasing more and more day by day. So is there any particular uh, advancements in the treatment of the cancers to cure in the fourth stage of the cancers? I, I think the, the major advance in the treatment of cancer that's come in the last uh, 10 years or so is immunotherapy. And immunotherapy is already really effective in dealing one type of cancer, and that's melanoma. And what we're discovering is the body has a whole variety of mechanisms that paralyze immunotherapy from working well, but we're beginning to discover how to unlock all of those secrets and make immunotherapy as efficient as it could be in, 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 in the future. And my feeling for individuals that have diagnosed cancer is immunotherapy is going to be one of the very powerful approaches in the future. Not just of dealing with the cancer, which we do now. We don't cure cancers today. We have many drugs that can target them, but the drugs only work for a year or so, and then you're back to where you were before. With immunotherapy, we really can think about cancer cures. Whenever we discuss about the cancer, there is so much discussion about the uh, uh, personalized medication. Can we expect this personalized medication in near future? And what about the gene editing? Well, those are two very different questions. So cancer and, and targeted therapies for cancer. I think most of the targeted therapies we're doing now are directed at symptoms and they don't really affect the, the cause of the cancer at all. So in that sense, they cost a lot of money and they don't really cure the patient. I read a New York uh, Times article uh, six months ago about a woman who was diagnosed in 2015 with breast cancer who'd had eight different therapies and for each one, she was okay for two months or six months or nine months, but then she went back to where she was before. And I don't call that a cure, I call that treating the symptoms. And I think with immunotherapy, we really can target that toward a complete cure. This, the second question you asked is uh, um, genome design, uh, and, and, and changing defective genes. This is being done worldwide in many laboratories now, looking at diseases that are caused by single genes, uh, uh, hemoglobin uh sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis. And the idea was that uh, two years ago, there was a Nobel Prize that, that was essentially around a bacterial system that let you go into a human being that had a defective gene, clip it out, and replace it with an effective gene, and to put it in a cell type, which uh, a stem cell type, which could expand in the individual. And in this way, we can we can cure, think about curing gene defects that deal with blood cells and so forth. Those are the first ones that are going to be cured. But there are cautions about safety and there are cautions about ethics that we're still working on. And I think we have to be very careful in these regards still. Thank you so much, sir. It was a really pleasure meeting you. So, Idi, biobanks ka ocho adhe vidanga gene ki samanchana treatments near future lela anti vira abotu nai dhanwala prajal ke elan tupiyo gunthu nina amshalapai leroi hood chepnetu nisa shalu. Camera person Ramesh to Ramya, ETV News, Hyderabad.